minutes after 8 o'clock and joining us in studio this morning from Loveless Regional Hospital, Regina Smith, uh, primary care nurse practitioner back with us. Good morning. How are you doing? Physician's assistant, I believe, is the official Nurse title. practitioner. Oh, you got it, it right the first time. There you go. <laughs> But, you know, does a lot of people help people. That things a lot of help people. There That's what go. she does. There you go. How are you doing today? I am awesome. How about you? Doing good. Well, imagine uh, this time of year, your your office is probably pretty busy with cold and flu season and RSV and, and every other variation of cold and flu-like things we got going on right now mm-hmm. here. So, so I guess the you know, main thing today is just kind of put it on people's radar and kind of the difference between the two and or the three and everything else that's going on right now and just kind of... You know, remind people to, you know, take care of yourself. Exactly. <laughs> and, and right now we're dealing with, like you said, RSV, flu, and COVID. COVID, yeah. And, you know, uh, it's been all over the news about, you know, um, some people having three and the concern about a tridemic type of situation. Sure. Um, I can tell you that um, New Mexico is one of the leading states in the United States for high flu cases right now congratulations so we, congratulations. Top of the list we have made the top of the list um it, so the amount of flu that we're seeing here is unreal okay. um rsv you know we look at that more for the young ones sure. and the elderly because those are the ones that it's really dangerous so it is for. it is available for elder because i've always heard kids and kids and kids so i didn't know if it was adults got it too or so so it is possible but more likely older folks and It's possible kids. that anybody can get RSV. Okay. When we really start looking and testing and wanting to know, okay. is people that are, are immunocompromised, the young and the elderly. Gotcha. So actually, a lot of people, some in their 30s, could have it. What it's going to look like is a bronchial cold. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, good so, deal. Yes. Well, actually, I, I, don't, I don't have any of that. I just have a regular <laughs> garden variety cold. I, I actually feel pretty okay. I just don't sound my, my best. So. Sure. But, yeah, it's, it's going around like everything else here. So, really, I mean, as far as, like, a patient perspective, are they all treated the same? You just, you, you know, you treat like you would for flu. P- flu is rest, you know, medicine. I mean, is, is it all? I mean, obviously, from a medical per- standpoint, they're different. They're you know they're caused by different things, and but but to us they all kind of look the same. They, they look like the flu. They do. So that's part of our job is trying to figure out <laughs> which one it is. Sure. We, and we can test for these things. We can test in the office. Um, so you're able to come by our office at one 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 two North Main and be tested. Okay. Okay. Um, and then the treatment, you know, for for COVID, we have for adults Paxlovid, which is an antiviral, gotcha. which really reduces the symptoms. Okay. For flu, we have Tamiflu, so we can help. Which we've with had that. for a few years. Right, now, right, right, right. And for RSV, really, you use um, you know nebulized saline or. Or some sort of a, a, a bronchial okay. uh, stimulant. Now, does, so, does, like, for instance, say you have RSV mm-hmm. or COVID, mm-hmm. but you treat it with Tamiflu. Will the Tamiflu have any kind of benefit? No. No. no, no, so, no, no so you really have to delineate which strain it or which of the three it is. Because the, because the treatment, one will be beneficial, the other two will not be. I didn't know if you got some. Correct. I didn't know if it was like you take a Tylenol and it, it kind of will treat the symptoms sure, or something. Sure, sure, yeah. But, but no, no it's, it, it won't help you at all if, if you misdiagnose, basically, and if you have Exactly, you so that's why it's so important to come in, get tested. Gotcha. Let's figure out what it is that you've got. And, you know, you may not, right now, we've got a lot of sinus stuff that's just going around. Sure. Um, the garden variety crust. <laughs> and it has, abs- it looks like all three of them, and it's not. Yeah. So when we rule that out, you know, then we're able to, to work with you on that, too. Sure. So, yes. So really, the, the best thing is uh, come and, you know, either schedule a appointment with you or, or with your primary care physician and say you know hey let's do, you know let's see what you got going on here whether it's a, a cold a flu uh the covid or rsv or or just the crud <laughs> you know what yes you know once that determined and then then it's easy you know we, all right great you got covid here start taking the the paxlovid or or here's here's uh the, your tamiflu or whatever and and i think tamiflu that's an over-the-counter thing now isn't it no, I, no, is no it not, still yet, a, not yet not yet okay, okay i thought i thought maybe that was even over the <laughs> Like they had a, a over-the-counter strength version of that now, but but uh, but either way, it's important to, to to determine which strain it is. Otherwise, you're going to be dealing with it for a lot longer than you wanted to, probably. <laughs> 
pretty much, and you know, the big thing that I want to drive home is, um, first thing, you can prevent a lot of this by vaccination. Mm -hmm. I know that that's very controversial, but I'm going to throw that out there. You know, vaccine for COVID, vaccine for flu. Mm -hmm. Make sure that your children's um, vaccinations completely are up to date. Um, And the second thing I want to drive home is that, you know, when you do get this, it's important to find out what it is because we don't need you running around in the community with this because that's how we pass it around at schools that, you know, so you need to stay home when we figure out kind of what's going on. Sure. So you don't pass it around. And mask wearing. Wear a mask if you think you're sick. Sure. It just to be considerate for others on some of those. Absolutely. Let me ask you this. Um, for folks like, a, you know, like I've had the, the original three, um, are those still providing us any benefit? Or are those kind of run its course and you need these boosters now to, to I mean, uh, I mean, are they providing any protection at all? Or are they kind of? worn out so to well, speak they're or... pretty much worn out I'm, gotcha. I'm not saying that they're not providing what i'm telling you is that what we're seeing is omicron variants mm, now just don't and, and because of the omicron variants we have these new um vaccines that are targeted to the omicron variants gotcha. kind of like we do with the flu every you sure year. we look at what variants there are and, and kind of pick a string them. exactly it's going to be the same way gotcha and that's pretty much how we're going to deal with covid for the foreseeable future is i believe so every year we'll get a a, a shot that matches the strain that's kind of impacting most of the people and and uh, and and it's it's an educated guess but it is a bit of a guess every year with flu shot sure so um so it'll be that same so even if they don't nail it that year it'll still provide um no like even when the because there's been years with the flu shot and they're like oh we didn't quite get it right but it's still gonna you know seriously reduce the the symptoms and things of the flu but it may not protect you from not getting it all together like right like we hoped it would kind of well and what we know about vaccinations is that they reduce uh, morbidity and mortality and um you know that's that's huge sure especially in the young in the elderly and if you are middle age and you have a lot of health concerns and when i'm talking a lot of health concerns uh, even obesity is considered a health concern. Sure. It's very, very strong for um, COVID right now. So, I mean, you, there's really some risk there. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. that's, well, and, and if you think about it, if COVID, it's like any other thing. If you, if you already have pre-existing conditions, if you have a lowered immune system because of you're young or older, or, or like you said, because you're dealing with cancer, diabetes, any kind of pre-existing or long-term condition which we talk about you know uh, we're talking you know heart disease you know if you're if you're susceptible to having a stroke or a heart attack if you're higher risk guess what you're also higher risks for having a a rougher time with covid and and these other uh you know the different flu-like colds here that are going on that's just we we all know that the science is there so if you if you are suffering from diabetes or anything that you're treating when you're not dealing with cold and flu, then you're, it's best for you, especially to get these booster vaccines and things because, um, you know, let's face it, a, a healthy 20 something that's athletic and in good shape gets COVID. It's, it's a minor inconvenience for them. They get a cold for a couple of days. I stay home and watch some bad TV and then go to work and then they're done with someone that's, you know, dealing with diabetes or something like that. It can, make those conditions worse and now we have to take you to the hospital because you can't breathe or because of something else that's going on here mm. it's just that covid takes advantage it's like cancer it goes where it the path of least resistance to do its most damage and if you've got um a weakened immune system it, it's going to have a field day with you if if you're young and virile and kind of have a built up antibodies and things it, it's going to have a tougher time cracking that case that case so Correct. And, and it's life. We all deal with it. You just so best bet is to go ahead and get your booster, get your shot, do the things that, that are um, best for your health. And, and, you know, and that's why, you know, we, I know we live in a world everyone's like, get your booster or your enemy, public enemy and all that. I'm not going all that direction, but, no. but you should make an educated decision. If you're commonly getting sick and commonly dealing with things, might be a good idea to go ahead and get your boosters, get your flu shot, get your get your uh, COVID uh, boosters and vaccines and all that. That way, you know, even if you get this stuff, now it's a little cold and you go home and 
drink some chicken soup and watch bad TV and then go back to work for a couple of days. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, and then, like I said, the big thing is, is, you know, you can come into our office on Main Street and be tested. Um, and then we can make you an appointment. But if you have any kind of concern, we can sure. even we'll run out and test you in your car. I'm, I mean, you know, so to keep you safe and to keep everybody else safe and call you at a later date, even do a televideo visit with mm-hmm. you if we need to, to keep you safe and keep you isolated. Sure. Um, so, uh, you know, we will go to all lengths to get you taken care of. Um, the last thing we want you to do is to have to present to the emergency room to be tested for the flu. You know, they are completely overrun right now. That's why our offices are, are sure. stepping it up. And, use, a, and, use your primary care. And, Absolutely, absolutely. To, to get that done to save you the, the headache, hassle, and overworking of our ERs here. But Correct. imagine both of them are, are probably pretty packed right now with with uh, flu and cold and those types of deals. Go. Yes. Oh, by the way, they got the regular caseload of right. you know coronary and strokes and car accidents and everything <laughs> else that happens in our day to day lives. Yes. So, um, so it's too easy just to go get that shot or or, or uh, you know if you if you do. Um, come get those systems, please make that appointment and, and absolutely that. we'll but, figure it out for you. We'll figure out what it is you have. Yeah. You know, you just protect yourself. If you're out in the community, please remember to wear a mask. Um, if you do have COVID, do have the flu, you may opt to choose to stay home. That's probably not the a bad kinder idea. thing to do. Um, and also wash your hands. That's a big thing. You know, that's how this is all transmitted. Just because the pandemic portion is over doesn't mean you should stop washing your hands. That's right. one thing we, we you the know. things that we learned through the pandemic <laughs> we really need to continue to apply. Absolutely, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, and, and that's I mean, even if uh, maybe you're not one for all the masks and all that, okay. Well, maybe just at least be a little proactive about not getting close to people. You know, what I mean, just kind of kind of do your own little six feet kind of thing it's like you see a gaggle of people's all right let's take a few steps back mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we don't need to be up in each other's grill and all that kind of thing <laughs> exactly <laughs> but uh but please just be cognizant of it and be be your own advocate sometimes here that's you know i and and uh and i'm just as guilty of this as anybody else we like to be row warriors and say i'll be fine push to well here I am. There's probably a few days last week I probably should have been here, but here I sit. And uh, you know, and so don't don't be that. And and you know, if you're sick, stay home. Don't right. don't you know? It's uh, there's nothing in this world that's too urgent that we can't wait till tomorrow to get it done. You know exactly. And so, and our office on Main Street, uh, eleven twelve, we um, treat pediatrics all the way to elderly. So we do the whole gamut. I remember the old radio days, like from the womb to the tomb. Come on, pretty, now. pretty much. That's where we were going with this. So we we have providers uh, that can do that. There's myself that's there. There's Dr. Peter Jewell and mm-hmm. there's Sarah East Brumana. Yeah, all three are awesome. We've had yes. them all on the show. Um, and and, uh, and then we have just, Leander Finney also. Oh, I don't think so, I've met that. Yeah, that person yeah. Yet, so. so, but uh, very like I said, and of course, if you're dealing with other. Things that have nothing to do with flu or COVID or, or RSV or any of that kind of stuff. Just come on down. Come and, on in. And we'll take, you know, they're, you're, you guys are the front line of defense on this primary care stuff. So if you got, even if it's heart or any of those issues, come see uh, Regina or any of the uh, staff there. And they can catch you with the right specialist in the Loveless system to to uh, do the follow-on and the more important work that they need Absolutely, to be, so. and we are taking new patients. So there's a lot of places in town that are no longer taking new patients. We are. Absolutely. Currently, um, so. I do want to ask a quick question since sure. we're talking about the – because a lot of people probably still have, like, COVID kits sitting at home, the, the mm-hmm. code test kits and all that, which is great. Take them, use them, test them as need be. But if they test negative for COVID at home, that doesn't mean you still don't have the flu or RSV or something like that. So – if you test negative for COVID, that doesn't mean you should not not go to the doctor if you're not feeling well, because it could be the flu, it could be RSV, and and unless you want to take an extremely long time to get rid of those, go get your doctor's appointment so you can get the proper medicines, and we can speed up this process and not drag it out into to a month long thing or or making it linger around so it turns into something worse that can actually kill you. And it's that's because I'm I'm guessing, and this, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you know, when you get like flu or, or, uh, COVID or RSV, it's not the 
disease. It's not that actual condition that kills you. It's usually it lowers your immune system to the point where the other things can come in. It's, that's you know, usually like the AIDS case. or something. It's like you don't die from AIDS per se. You die from pneumonia. You die for Correct. something that your immune system just can't fight no more. Correct. And, and in essence, this kind of does the same same thing to your body. Yes, it does. So that's why you have to treat it seriously and get the proper meds for it. It's it just it's it's not that's going to get you, but it opens your body to anybody and their uncle coming in and. And right. taking you out basically exactly so exactly that's why it's important and one thing i want to mention with the home covid tests is if you're going to take one at home and i know that a lot were mailed out from the government for free last mm-hmm. year look at the expiration date they aren't as fresh as we them, thought <laughs> a lot of them expired back in august okay and stuff so um look at the expiration date they were not long lived okay um it's useless. So if you buy one uh, at the store, those got a little more shelf life than the free ones sure. the government gave you. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> you got the generic ones. You need to get the Kleenex version. You know, the good ones. <laughs> not, not the knockoff brand that you got for free. There so. you go. But uh, but all joking aside, that yeah. is a good tip. Yeah. You know, don't just because you have it and your thing doesn't mean it's 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 still hunky dory. They have shelf lives. Like uh, like a lot of other medicines and other right. products here right. too. So please be cognizant of that too. And and for for the sake of argument too, if you have that Nyquil that's been sitting in your cabinet since like two cold and flu seasons ago, you might want to pony up for a new one. Replace it. Look yeah. at the, look at the expiration date. And they that's give you. Okay. I'm just saying they usually give you a good leeway on expiration mm-hmm. dates. Like so, if you if it says it expires in 2022, you probably have had that. Cough syrup for about three years in your house. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Let's go pony up for the new one. <laughs> one thing that I do want to bring up that you that you, that you bring up with cough syrup and stuff is, and I, I work with a lot of children mm. in my practice, and you know, cough syrups and cold remedies are not approved by the FDA for children under a certain age. Really? Yeah, usually like six or seven. Interesting. So if you've got a little one, we've got to look at other options. Okay. Don't be um, just self doctor. Don't them. do not give them over the counter adult strength medicine. I know they do make some kid versions that and you can some buy. of those, and and they'll tell you, you know, you can use it at seven or above. Okay, you know, but please read your labels. Sure. Um, because really they're not approved and they can do some harm. Good deal. So yeah. So that's another reason you'd want to come in and and see us, and we can makes, get them something. Makes perfect sense yeah. there too. Yeah. And, and uh, so, yes, please uh, make and, – and, and, and obviously, you know, because I know we at parents, we want to do everything we can to, oh, sure. to stop our children's suffering and things. But but a, a baby's body is still being developed, and it's, it's a lot different than your body right now. So exactly. It needs uh, a lot more work and tender, loving care than – until it can do some of its things on its own and build up its own immunities and, and things like that, which sure. which your baby will do. It just takes a little time. Sure, sure. But in the meantime, you got, got to put it in a bubble. <laughs> 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 um, and of course, um, you know, don't forget if you've got anything else going on, to please mm-hmm. don't. Um, you know, I, I know, like you said, it's busy right now with cold and flu, and a lot of people are coming in getting those kinds of things taken care of but if you're dealing with any other issues please don't put it on the back burner i know some people you know you know that was you know we worried a lot about that during the pandemic where people weren't taking care of their their normal um pre-existing diabetes and heart conditions and not taking care of that kind of stuff don't use this as a reason not to keep up on that you know one of the things and you bring up an awesome point here that i do want to say is because of the pandemic i have run into numerous people women that have not had mammograms in Mm -hmm. three years you know uh, well women exams well men exams routine stuff um your your um medicare wellness Mm -hmm. for for um those 65 and older um, yearly exams for children, you know, just to keep their immunizations up to date. Absolutely. So we're yeah. seeing a bunch of deficiencies with that. Please don't hesitate. We're here and we do it all. Absolutely. And and you're doing your children and yourself right by by scheduling these things regularly. Sure. This 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 these are the types of things that keep you from having to visit for the other stuff. That's <laughs> that's right. And 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 in all fairness by you being up on your medicines and stuff for diabetes and all that, you're actually giving your body a better chance if you do get 
sick. Now at least, you know how hard it is for someone that's untreated diabetes to get over COVID versus someone that's been maintaining and keeping their blood sugars and all. Your body's in a much healthier place to fight it if that's you're not. That's correct. Because now your your body's already working overtime trying to fix what's going on with the diabetes or the heart or stroke or whatever conditions that pre-existing that you're dealing with. And then we throw in another wrinkle, oh, here's a COVID virus or here's the flu virus. Here's here's something else in there that we got to divide and conquer to go fix. And so your body just can't. There's only so much of that your body can take before it's, Absolutely. it starts shutting down. Um, so do yourself that favor and, and, and uh, take care of yourself. Get your vaccines. Get your boosters. Get, uh, you know, get, make regular appointments with your physicians taking care of those chronic conditions. The best thing you can do for yourself is to stay on top of those things, seeing your doctor regularly, staying in constant conversation with them about your pre-existing conditions. So, and, and, and I know enough to know that just when you think you have a lot of them, Nick, in the bud, they, they <laughs> mutate and alter and you have to change things. That's just, you know, they, I know diabetes especially, just when you think you you got a good routine going and your body done changes and, and you got to try again. You know, that's, that's just right. how it works. So, and it's not anybody's fault. It's just life and how it works. And you got to understand that. So. That's right. So please right. don't, don't, don't delay these kind of things. If you're feeling like you're a little, like you got a cold thing coming on, you know, take your home COVID test and thing and then schedule an appointment. And let's, let's go ahead and narrow down which one of it is, or if it's none of the above, and then go according. And know that because we are seeing new patients at Loveless, we can get you in quick. You yeah. know, we can make this expedient um, and, a, and a very quick process sure. for you. I mean, as far as, um, you know, COVID and RSV and flu, I mean, they're all pretty similar as far as what they look like. Is there a significant difference in the looks for someone or like for a layperson to tell or is it strictly just tests that you guys do to determine the difference? It's pretty much the the tests. I mean, you know, you're going to have a runny nose with the flu. You could have a runny nose with COVID. You're definitely going to have a runny nose with RSV. Cough the same way. So it's really different. The one that you can kind of tell the difference with is strep and that's something that we haven't talked about. A lot of strep going around with kids. Um, Usually they don't have the cough and the runny nose and stuff as much. Okay. Um, Just the soreness. and the Right. But that's honestly about it. We need to test you that's why it's so important yes so please don't delay um you can if you don't have a primary care physician come on come on down uh, regina and and any of the the uh the professionals there can can help you out they're located 1112 north main uh call the office direct 575-627-4200 or uh come on by you know you can even and you can uh, schedule an appointment with regina smith or any of the other uh, physicians there that can help you uh, take care same day, next day. I mean, a lot of times uh, you can get your child in or yourself in this day, the same day and all that, too. Absolutely. So, and uh, I imagine, uh, give them a little time on Mondays, because I imagine Mondays are a little <laughs> bit crazier than sure. other days, because sure. everybody gets sick over the weekend, and they all, so there's probably, that's why we need to let her go, because there's probably about 10 <laughs> people sitting <laughs> at her office right now waiting yeah. for her to uh you know, get 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 taken care of here today. So we want to do that. But um, is there anything we missed? Anything that we wanted to, that you guys wanted to share, or anything that we wanted to get out there that maybe people should know? Just please take care of yourself. And and I speak for myself, and I believe the other providers that you know we're just really blessed to work in this wonderful community of Roswell and and we want you to know that we do support the community and and we're very fortunate to have uh, you know I mean think about it a town this size we got not one but two great hospitals here and and, and so we, we we're now a mecca you know I remember when I first moved here 20 some years ago people going to Albuquerque Lubbock you know somewhere other than here to get stuff done and Nowadays, people come here to come. Absolutely. Loveless is a a big reason for that. So we're very thankful and we're very, very appreciative. So as much as you guys are thankful to be here, we are very thankful. And uh, can we get burritos at the hospital yet? Yeah. All right. See, I waited till the very end to bring that up today. (laughs) I'm a one-track mind dude. They do. Get there early. So, again, to make an appointment with uh, Regina Smith or anyone there, at the office, uh, come on by 1112 North Main. Call 575-627-4200. You can also go to loveless.com, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, you can find a physician and read Absolutely. everything about everything there, too. So, Absolutely. Very good. 
Well, thank you as always. Appreciate the visit. Thank you. Stay healthy, and we'll we'll see you here next time. And don't work too hard. Be blessed. All thank right. you. And Merry Christmas. If I don't see you between you now and too, then, Mike. too. Thanks. I will. I'm gonna I'm gonna get in trouble. That's what I always do at Christmas. <laughs> I do more than I should. <laughs>